this uh, this couch is thirty-two thousand uh, dollars. Do you want me to go through with this? And I remember pretty specifically, and now in hindsight, it seems to be prophetic. But he said uh, yes, and. Uh, Essentially, he said, if it ever becomes public, uh, I'll just blame it on you. You're the administrator. And welcome back to Inside West Virginia Politics this Sunday morning. We are talking about the impeachment, but we do want to talk a little bit more about Don Blankenship. He uh, filed to be a U.S. Senate candidate on the Constitution Party. With me is Delegate Roger Hanshaw, Republican of Clay County, the uh, Vice Chair of Judiciary. I want to ask you about the sore loser law because you were the sponsor of the bill. In your estimation, uh, is the Blankenship filing a violation of the sore loser law? Or do we have to wait and see? Well, the latter. So we certainly we do. It, it, is, is it a violation of the tort loser law? Yes. But realize that we passed that bill, Mark, in response to the Supreme Court's holding in an earlier case. So one of the things the legislature often does is revisit holdings by the court during the, the previous year to make sure we don't need to update our code to conform to those holdings. And that's what we did here. We updated our code to conform to the, the court's holding in the Wells case. So the, the, the so-called sore loser provision is the law in West Virginia even even before this bill was ever enacted. So in, in essence, um, what, what is the purpose of the sore loser law? What's the intent of it? Well, the, the intent of it is to just give give individuals who have won a primary the right to go head to head in the general election. Uh, that, that It's a provision that's been adopted in many states around the country. It's a common provision of law. Uh, we see no reason to believe that we have a problem with it. And, and basically for the loser, it says, hey, you had your chance, you had your bite at the apple, you lost, you're done. It does. Okay. All right, let's talk a little bit about the impeachment process. That's a big deal going on in the Judiciary Committee. Earlier this week, the um, Judicial Investigations Committee essentially cleared three justices, uh, 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 Justices Walker, Workman, and Davis of any wrongdoing. Does that affect the impeachment process, or could you guys still sanction them for their behavior while on the court? Well, th this is an area of the law where we have to be very precise. So the, the JIC, the Judicial Investigation Commission, issued a finding that those, those justices had committed no violations of the Code of Judicial Conduct. But realize that's the, that's the extent of, of JIC's jurisdiction. There are other bodies of law out there, the Ethics Act, for example, the, the, the maladministration provisions contained in the state constitution that are outside the purview of the JIC, and, and the, the legislature's committee on the judiciary still has all the authority in the world to look at those issues, and, and we have continued to do so. The most contemporary would be the court spending. I mean, is it potentially possible that the committee could say these justices are guilty of excessive, reckless spending of state tax dollars, and you guys could issue some kind of, you could impeach them, but you could issue a censure as well? Or We, we could. Well, the House could. The, the, the full House could do that. Okay. Uh, your thoughts as we go ahead? We had a big battle last week over, uh, over freedom of the press and whether the press could go along with you delegates on the tour of the Supreme Court. Sure. Uh, we, we've tried, and by we, I mean the entire committee on the judiciary has tried throughout this whole process to be as open to the public as we possibly could. We're entitled under the law to actually conduct these entire proceedings in closed executive session. We've not done that because we feel like it's important to have the press and the public looking in on what we do and staying as informed as they can stay on what's going on with this proceeding. Uh, this this tour, if it were to happen, we believe would be a part of that proceeding and we wanted to make sure it was as open as all the rest of our process. Before we go, we got to talk about RISE West Virginia. You're the chair, co-chair of the flooding committee in the legislature. You've been a busy guy this summer. Where do things stand? So we were in, we were tasked, the, the joint standing committee on flooding, which is a, a, a committee that will exist even after our investigation is over, was tasked by the speaker and the president with looking at what happened with the RISE West Virginia program. Program. We've held now a series of, of, of combinations of meetings and hearings on the status of that program, what happened, why it happened, and more importantly, and perhaps most importantly, how can we keep it from happening again. We intend to hold at least one more hearing, Mark, before we issue our written findings. And those, those findings, Senator Gonch and I have discussed, are likely to come from the committee in the form of recommendations for changes to the law and changes to policy to really make sure we're in a better position to deal with that federal money when it comes in the future. We're down to a minute. Uh, your reaction to this $21,000 junk it that a bunch of commerce employees and others went to at, at uh, the Stonewall Resort. This was money that's supposed to be earmarked for flood aid. Uh, that's my understanding. Uh, as, a, as a former 
as a former state employee, I know that oftentimes some of those some of those grants of federal money come with strings attached, which say something like, "You will have training here, you will do preparation there." So I want to first make sure that there was there, there was no requirement by the federal government that they hold such a meeting. But if they held it without such a requirement, that that's troubling because that's money that should have gone to build a home. All right, as mentioned, you're a busy guy. You cut your fingerprints on the sore loser law, the impeachment proceedings, and the rise West Virginia. Roger uh, Hanshaw, delegate from Clay County, thank you for being here today. Thanks. Inside My pleasure. Your politics. We'll have you back again. All right. Okay. Stay with us. We have more, especially on the discussion of impeachment. Don't go away.